So, it's great to have Harley Davidson. Great what a great uh, group of people, and what a fantastic job you did, and thank you for all of the votes you gave me in Wisconsin. <laughs> Some people thought that was an upset. I thought we were going to win it. From the beginning, we thought we were going to win it. Harley Davidson is a true American icon, one of the greats. Your motorcycles have carried American service members in the war and the wars. They take care of our police officers, and I see it so often. Whenever I go, whenever there's a motorcycle group, oftentimes it's a Harley, and the sound of that Harley is a little different, I have to tell you. It's really good. So thank you, Harley Davidson, for building things in America. I think you're going to even expand. I know your business is now doing very well, and there's a, there's a lot of spirit right now in the country that you weren't having so much in the last number of months that you have right now. You see what's happening. Uh, I'm especially honored to welcome the steel workers and the machinists to the White House. Who's a steel worker here? You're all steel workers, essentially, right? Yeah, we are. But you folks have been terrific to me. Sometimes your top people didn't support me, but the steel workers supported me, right? <laughs> A lot of your tough people, they'll be losing their jobs pretty soon, I guess, but they're all coming around. We're, uh, we're getting them. But the workers supported this big league. We want to make it easier for businesses to create more jobs and more factories in the United States. And you're a great example of it. That means we have to make America the best country on Earth to do business, and that's what we're in the process of doing. We're redoing NAFTA. We're doing a lot of our trade deals, and we're negotiating properly with countries, even countries that are allies. A lot of people taking advantage of us. A lot of countries taking advantage of us, really terribly taking advantage of us. We had one instance in Australia. I have a lot of respect for Australia. I love Australia as a country, but we had a problem where, uh, for whatever reason, President Obama said that they were going to take uh, probably well over a thousand uh, illegal immigrants who were in prisons and they were going to bring them and take them into this country. And I just said, why? I just wanted to ask a question. I can ask that question of you, why? 1,250, could be 2,000, could be more than that. And I said, why? Why are we doing this? What's the purpose? So we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, a previous administration does something. You have to respect that. But you can also say, why are we doing this? That's why we're in the jams that we're in. And you guys, especially the steel workers, understand what I'm saying, right? So I just, uh, you know, we have we have some wonderful allies, but we're gonna and we're gonna keep it that way. But we have to be treated fairly, also. We have to be treated fairly. In this administration, our allegiance will be to the American workers and to American businesses, like Harley Davidson. And we're very strong in the 1980s, and I remember this. You were victims of trading abuse, big trading abuse, where they were dumping all sorts of competitors all over the place. And Ronald Reagan stepped in, and he put on large tariffs. And you wouldn't be talking about Harley Davidson probably right now if he didn't do that. But we're going to help you, too, and we're going to make it really great for business, not just you, but for everybody. We're going to be competitive with anybody in the world. We're going to be doing taxing policies very soon. It's going to be coming out. And I know health care is a big problem for every country. Every company is now suffering with health care because of the tremendous cost. And that's uh, one of the things that we're working on hardest, that and tax policy and tariffs and trade. So I think you will be very happy. It's an honor to have you at lunch. I really appreciate your support. You've given me tremendous support. Your workers, in particular, have given, given tremendous support. I want to thank the people of Wisconsin, in particular. It's been amazing what happened up there. That was a big shocker that evening. When they go, wow, I'll never forget, wow, Wisconsin just went for Trump. Then all of these people, especially that guy right there. <laughs> no, but then they said, what's going on? Wisconsin just went for Trump. And then Michigan went for Trump and Pennsylvania. So it was, they were great, just great people. These are amazing people, and they get it. So again, to all of you at the table today, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. We really appreciate it greatly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Trump, what's your reaction off the table in a round? No. Nothing's, honestly, no. nothing is off the table. All right. I'll, I haven't eased anything. Well, I haven't eased anything.
There you uh, saw the president uh, meeting with representatives from Harley Davidson. Uh, let's get some uh, analysis and some new reporting. I'm joined by our Pentagon reporter Ryan Brown, our international diplomatic editor Nick Robertson, and our senior international correspondent Fred Plyke. And uh, Nick, uh, your reaction to the president saying, "I haven't eased." anything when it comes to Russia sanctions. Uh, you saw the announcement from the Treasury Department uh, that at least one part of the sanction imposed against uh, the Russian uh, intelligence uh, agency known as the FSB, the Federal Security Service, was eased. One aspect of it, a very minor easing, but some are seeing it as significant because of the symbolism. The FSB was accused of uh, hack being involved in the hacking of the uh, U.S. presidential elections. Go ahead. Yeah, it's interesting, Wolf, that he would push back on that because the general assessment is it's only a very small easing. The Russians themselves have said, yeah, we've seen it, but it's not such a big deal for us. Uh, but the markets in Russia obviously reacted to it. That was positive. And of course, what these sanctions are designed to do is to send a message to the leadership. And the way to pin pain on the leadership is through the economy. And the way to get a course correction from the leadership, Putin, is through the economy. And the, the economy has been suffering. But let's go back a few weeks uh, when, when uh, President Trump did an interview with a German magazine and a British newspaper. He talked about the pain of sanctions on the Russian people and how uh, that wasn't necessarily a good thing to put the Russian people in that kind of pain. Well, here we've already seen that in a very small way that pain has been eased, but the president here is brushing it off. That's surprising. It's as if he's, so, it's as if he's saying, well, we're not giving anything away yet. Um, Yet he appears to be doing that, and we know from the tone of his phone conversation with President Putin that we heard from the Kremlin uh, quite uh, just a little bit short of effusive, full of detail um, from the Kremlin's point of view, a good conversation. This seems to indicate um, that the president perhaps is already feeling some pushback from this decision, however it was made. But it's certainly something at the moment that, uh, that, that for the Russians, as Matthew was saying a little a short time ago, for the, from the Russian perspective, this is a positive development in the right direction. Don't get carried away about it. But why is President Trump pushing back and saying it's not been done? Yeah, he says there hasn't been any easing of the sanctions. Uh, Fred Plank, then let's talk about the U.S.-Australian relationship right now. You just heard uh, President Trump once again uh, blast the decision by the Obama administration to eventually take in, what, about 1,250 refugees who have been stranded on islands off the coast of Australia, sometimes for years. They're in detention camps. The U.N. has called those detention camps cruel and illegal. These refugees came from countries including Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Iran, and Iraq. I, I know you've been taking a very close look at this. Uh, the phone conversation between the President of the United States, the Australian uh, Prime Minister. Uh, give us the latest information you're learning about this. Mm. Well, I mean, the Australian Prime Minister, uh, he came out and he really didn't want to talk very much about this phone conversation. I mean, of course, uh, the info that we're getting is that the phone conversation didn't go well at all uh, and that uh, Donald Trump obviously wanted to confront uh, this measure that the U.S. might be uh, taking some of these uh, refugees uh, from Australia, of course, calling them illegal immigrants, which in itself, of course, uh, sparked uh, some uh, outrage uh, across the board. The Australian Prime Minister, for him, for his part, said that this phone conversation uh, went cordially. He said he didn't want to go into any of the details, and he also uh, denied that it had ended in any way, shape, or form uh, abruptly. But at the same time, of course, Wolf, we have to keep in mind that Australia is a long-standing ally uh, of the United States, is a country that has gone to pretty much every war with the United States since World War II, and even now is a, is a major part uh, of, of uh, the Operation Inherent Resolve over uh, Iraq and, and Syria. They are fighting against ISIS, and so certainly this is something that many in Australia see as a slap in the face and are questioning whether or not uh, the Australians should remain part of that uh, alliance, uh, should uh, continue uh, its support for the United States in these operations, even though, as you see, uh, the government there in Australia sort of trying to downplay the actual uh, heat of that phone conversation and how badly it actually went, Wolf. And very quickly, uh, Fred, the Australian government says uh, these refugees, these 1,250 refugees, they're being kept in these offshore detention centers. They're not allowed to come in to Australia properly mm. because they tried to get in by boat, and as a result, they're barred from coming into Australia. Is that right?
Yeah, that's absolutely right. That's a long-standing policy that the uh, Australians have had for a very long time. It certainly is something that has uh, uh, sparked a lot of international criticism that uh, the Australians uh, would not allow these people to come into Australia. Also, one of the things that also sparked uh, criticism as well uh, was uh, some of the conditions uh, that uh, these folks uh, were housed in when they came there uh, by boat. So certainly this is something where uh, the U.S. Uh, under Barack Obama, uh, under that uh, administration, tried to find some sort of uh, solution to this problem, made this agreement, and certainly at this point in time, the Australians believe that the U.S. needs to stick by it. And you heard President Trump call them illegal immigrants who are mm -hmm. in a prison right now. Uh, Ryan, you're over at the Pentagon for us. Uh, you're getting some new details uh, on that deadly Yemen raid. What are you learning? That's right, Wolf. We're actually starting to learn a little bit about the sequencing of events when it came to granting of authorities to conduct the raid. Now, we'd already been told that Donald Trump was the one who greenlit the raid, although given the complexity of this mission, planning for it had gone months in the, in the past into the Obama administration. We now know that Central Command, which oversees Middle East operations for the military, actually recommended the raid back in November, actually the day before the election. Now, eventually it was approved by Obama's Secretary of Defense, Ash Carter. A lot of these details just confirmed by the White House Press Secretary, Sean Spicer, from the podium. So we know that Donald Trump, only a few days after taking the oath of office, greenlit the operation, which is called a site exploitation raid, aiming to get as much intelligence on al-Qaeda in Yemen as possible in the hopes of preventing future attacks of the terror group. All right, Ryan Brown over at the Pentagon. Thank you, Fred Plaitkin, Nick Robertson. Guys, thanks to you as well. Uh, there's more news coming in. Uh, uh, President Trump uh, weighing in on reports that he was actually trying to ease some sanctions against Russia, plus new details on that deadly Yemen raid that killed a U.S. Navy SEAL. That and a lot more. We'll be right back. Choose to go. To indulge your curiosity. Explore a new road to see where it takes you. Meet the leaders who change the